Um, welcome to our session, Incorporating Library Values in Campus Digital Experience, Enabling Secure Access to Library Resources via Open Essence. Uh, my name is Hong Ma. I joined by my colleague, Margaret Hanner. We're both from Loyola University, Chicago. We are library system. I'm head of library system. Margaret is our digital services librarian. Um, today, we are going to present to you uh, about um, our experience about incorporate us into the campus um, technology roadmap. Um, next, please. Um, as we all know, digital age just uh, forced everyone, the campus or technology partner, the whole institution, including library, into the digital transformation journey. So, um, started with years ago, we, um, the library systems technology department really repositioned ourselves as a driver of digital transformation for the entire library. So we did a lot of uh, effort in terms of uh, in an realign with uh, our technology priorities with the campus technology um, roadmap. Um, and also at the same time, kept a very close um, um, up-to-date library technology uh, needs to, to build, try to build the bridge between the two. As we all know, uh, campus technology partner and the library and other unit, we share some priorities about in terms of uh, privacy, security, seamless uh, user experience. But however, we might have a different aim or different priority at a particular time. Um, we're also limited in the local managed infrastructure. So the preparation of understand the each other better, understand our common user community better is become very important. Um, so here just some example about we are gradually embedded ourselves into the campus IT. Um, in the campus committee, committees such as Academic Technology Committee, Information Security Council, and Research Technology Working Groups, so library really, uh, particularly library systems technology department, we try to very proactively advocate states in those committees, really uh, understand the uh, agenda spring to those uh, campus centralized committee, also bring the uh, timely update from library point of view to those initiatives. In addition to that, uh, library system team also initiated try to maintain and develop a very strong point-to-point -point relationship with particular campus IT teams based on the project or maintain regular communication, making sure we understand each other where we are in terms of a digital sense of information and the, to do our best to, de to deliver best value to our common customer and our user community. Next, please. So the example, like about two years ago, uh, the led by the campus ITS, they started rolling out the whole five years Loyola digital experience with the three phases. As you can see here, the basic is a fundamental one is uh, is the phase one. It's focusing on infrastructure and architecture. As we highlighted here, identity and access management, the security and the single sign-on become the, the major part of this phase. Um, so at the same time, uh, we also, again, the library world, what happening, we, we started, everybody started realize IP-based authentication is not secure, it's not in good, best practice in terms of a technology involving. It's no longer because users maintain multiple mobile, multiple devices, different, more complexity um, computing environment. That's no longer uh, the case. So we're helping also follow closely with the trending like RA21, seamless um, access to the lasso initiatives through a variety of avenues such as ERNL, conference and other avenues. Um, next slide, please. But maintaining um, 
since we are positioning ourselves as a driver of this uh, trans digital transformation, so we really um, laid down, uh, where made, made sure we are kind of well situated in understanding the campus IT technology roadmap, as well as a trend from the academic library technology um, uh, sector. With that, I'm going to turn over to my colleague, um, Margaret. She will that. Uh, make sure uh, she will dive into the particular project and about how we uh, make our start our journey um, in this project. Yeah, so this was a very, um, it's been a very intense year working on this project. So let me go over a little bit of a timeline about this. Um, so we, um, we first sort of thought about Open Athens in the spring of 2019. So it sort of came to our attention as um, how we could get access to it um, and through through EBSCO. Um, and we started to think about it at that time, there were a lot of appealing aspects of it, but overall we sort of were, were lukewarm because of the money aspect. Um, while we knew it would solve a lot of problems and give us a lot of opportunities, um, we felt like it was, uh, we couldn't quite justify that expenditure at that time. However, later that year in November um, 2019, um, so about a year ago, we were offered a very good deal through our consortium. And then that started to bring the pieces together um, that it was possible to do, because we knew um, over throughout the course of, of that rest of 2019, we could really see that this would really work well with um, the way our campus IT was moving. Um, so we decided to move ahead with it. Um, and we had our first meeting um, March 5th um, with our EBSCO representatives to kind of kick off the project. So we all know what happened shortly thereafter. Um, and we sort of thought like, well, what do we do? Do we, do we go forward with this? But, um, you know, it's, we're all working from home. Um, but when, one of the things that became very clear to us is that uh, relying on local infrastructure and local access was not going to be um, the easiest thing to do with everyone working remotely. Um, we had a, a fire in our data center um, shortly after everyone started working remotely that kicked access for everyone for, um, a whole day. Um, so that sort of indicated to us that this really was going to be very important to keep moving forward with um, making our infrastructure a little more um, distributed. Um, so yeah, we started meeting with our team weekly or bi-weekly later on um, since in April. And then so shortly um, after this presentation, um, we will then finish our implementation in terms of working with our implementation team. However, of course, we still will have work to do. And I'm going to talk a little bit about what some of that work is. So there were a lot of challenges in doing this project. Um, so number one was navigating different federated solutions and or IP-based authentication among different content or service providers. Um, our second challenge was performing layers of configurations among library systems in a volatile time environment, a volatile system environment, which I'll explain in more detail. And then providing tailored ongoing education for our library staff and our user community. So get into these challenges in more detail. Um, as we started this project, um, I think the idea of federated authentication was somewhat new to us. We sort of understood it at a high level, but didn't really know how to implement it. Um, and so um, we had to really work with our campus IT to understand a lot of these, these issues early on. And now I think we've, you know, we've become more partners on this. But um, so we just some a little background, our campus directory service is Active Directory, and there's multiple services tied to this. So it's used for Azure, Active Directory, Shibboleth, other things like that. Um, we are also a member of InCom in addition to Open Athens. Um, so like I said, our, our internal discussion or internal understanding was somewhat cursory, but we were able to work very closely with our IT colleagues who actually joined our implementation team meetings for weeks and weeks. Um, as, early on in the project so that we can make the correct selections for integration between um, Azure Active Directory and Open Athens, which is what the way they wanted to go. Um, and I think that was really valuable that we had them uh, there all the time and um, no complaints. They just showed up to meetings and, and kept um, being really helpful. Um, I think we also didn't necessarily appreciate that our vendors that we work with have different expectations and knowledge levels when it comes to federations or their support of them. So some of them kind of want nothing to do with it and they say uh, it's still IP-based authentication um, and so we had to work on setting those up as proxy resources. Others of them sort of um, maybe are, you know, have what they prefer. Um, we definitely have some that are sort of 
you know, unsure still to this day whether we want in common or open Athens. So working through that is an ongoing challenge. Um, our configurations for library systems, we had a lot of different projects going on at the same time. So while we were trying to do this project, we also were uh, moving over to the Ex Libre Central Discovery Index as part of our uh, Alma Primo suite. Um, and then we also in the summer were migrating to Primo VE. Um, those projects had mostly been planned as far in advance um, and it just was sort of a coincidence the timing all worked out on all of it. Um, Meanwhile, in the Open Athens project, we had different aspects where we had to check all our links internally on Open Athens um, that they were providing to make sure it was working um, for authentication at a basic level. But then also, how do we manage to get to um, resources for our research guides A to Z list and our links on our website A to Z list, which had to be rebuilt for multiple proxy prefixes. And another piece in here that I, I don't um, is important to realize is that we also had to um, update links within Alma and Primo, um, again, complicated somewhat by the fact that we were migrating to a different system uh, of Primo at that exact time. Um, our layers of staff training um, was another piece that we are still kind of working through, but, but I think early on we sort of understood that our patrons, of course, are at the center of this. That's why we're doing it. Um, and our public services staff work directly with those patrons, um, but we certainly work a lot with them as well. Um, but they need to have a sort of enough understanding to help library patrons. Our implementation team has to be able to train our public services staff and then sort of um, the, you know, Hong and I and other people in our systems department and our IT staff have to understand the sort of technology at a different level to train everyone else at those different levels. So um, I will say getting that first step, the, the systems and IT training took enough time for our implementation team to work it out. Um, so there are certainly things where we're still working on, on how do we actually train end users at this point. So this is a sample staff communication, and this is what I, I'm showing this to indicate the amount of things we had going on over the last, over this year. Um, so from May to August, um, so many different um, moving pieces and projects and groups getting together, um, again, also in a very volatile time. So it was, um, a lot to take on, um, but I, you know, in the, in the end, we do feel pretty good about the fact that we did all these things because we feel our, our infrastructure is much more secure at this point. Um, this is a kind of example of an early Open Athens explanation we gave them, just a really basic level. We're sort of finding that this level is, uh, we're kind of beyond that at this point. Like we, we have more information to give them, we have more nuance to this. So we are actually now rolling out more training um, for our public services staff to explain more about Open Athens and more about troubleshooting. Um, one thing that's really important to our library is collaborative documentation, collaborative understanding of projects across departments. So we worked with um, public services and other liaison librarians to create documentation. Um, so for example, this is our off-campus access page on our website. Um, we had a group, um, edit this page together to make sure that it made sense to everybody, they could explain it. Um, and there's certainly more that could be done on this, um, but it helped clarify our questions and training needs. It certainly didn't answer all our questions, but um, this kind of process we find is really critical in, in making sure that our projects are a success. So pros and cons of, of our Open Athens project. So our, this infrastructure definitely works more seamlessly with our campus infrastructure. Um, I think we really appreciate the fact that we can now offer people a much more seamless experience um, where they're not, if they've logged in to their campus services, they don't have to log in again to access material from off campus. So that's great. Um, we have somewhat more control over our user experience with sample attributes uh, than we did with our previous LDAP um, easy proxy integration, but that um, I will say is not always, um, it's a mixed bag sometimes because um, sometimes we have too much control. Um, I would say our CODs were, um, it was much more a complex project than we entirely understood at the beginning. Um, we sort of knew it was a, a big tool that could do a lot of stuff, but we did not necessarily know um, all the bits and pieces we were gonna need to know and maybe um, the way that the project was gonna be managed. Um, I think overall, a project, any project that was done this year, I think is gonna have a similar con here. We started this project right as we were all working from home um, and trying to adapt to a new environment. So we had a very slow start. Uh, so, um, and we had a lot of people with um, you know, personal issues over the summer that, that meant that things got behind. Um, but I think that's sort of the nature of this project, of any project done this year was gonna have this, this problem. So um, in conclusion, we now feel that um, doing this project has put us in a much better place in terms of our integration with um, 
library or our library technology with campus technology. Um, and I think we really appreciate the knowledge we've gained um, and cementing the relationships that we have with our IT colleagues. As Hong mentioned, we really work on, on building those over time. Um, and this was yet another example where we were able to, to make that happen. So we would love to talk to you about, um, if you have questions about um, your own implementation or um, have some feedback you'd like to share with us about our project, we'd love to hear with you. You can email us um, or, or you can contact me by Twitter. Thank you very much.